What's up peeps, welcome back to Rebranded Safety. Today we're going to do another video on our CDM series where we're going to be talking about the contractors. Let's jump into the intro and we'll get into contractors. Yeah! What's up peeps, welcome back to Rebound and Safety. Rebound and Safety is the YouTube channel and podcast doing exactly what it says on the tin. So if you're new here, hit subscribe, bell, follow, blah, 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 all of that stuff. My name's James McPherson. I am the MD and lead consultant from riskfluentlimited.com. Uh, if you wanna check that out, riskfluentlimited.com, that's not the name of our company, from Risk Fluent Limited. But if you wanna check us out, you can go to riskfluentltd.com. There we go. Um, yeah, we can help you with this shit. Anyway, let's jump into Oh no, it's just not my X-Wing. Okay, let's get into contractors then. So we're part of the mini series do it focusing on CDM. So um, go and check the other stuff out. We've done an intro, we've done designers, we've done the client, we've done notifiable. Got another video that we'll do after this, which is all about the documentation within CDM. So let's talk about contractors then. So a contractor is the easy one, really. It's anyone doing any kind of construction work, any work that's contributing to the construction of the project, right? You are a contractor and a contractor has duties. And the same as in the designer video, you've got contractors as the the overarching role within the construction project and then you've got principal contractors that kind of sit above that but they will have additional duties so let's get into the overarching duties of all contractors so same as a designer a contractor has a legal duty to not accept a project if they can't freaking do it right Easy said than done because so many times people do it and I understand to a certain extent it's hard when you're trying to run a business and you need some money to say no to a project but it's really really important if you've not got the capacity or the competence to do it to say no we can't do this. Um, and you have a legal duty within CDM to do that. Contractor also has a duty the same as the designer to make sure that the project doesn't move forward unless the client is aware of their duties under the regulations. Same as the designer, you should be keeping an eye on this project and making sure that everyone's doing what they need to do. It's not about that their job and this is my job. You know, obviously we're not gonna ask you to go in and start drawing designs, but ultimately you need to make sure that you're working with people who know what they're doing, right? And that goes the same for the client. Even though this client can be really far removed from these people, but actually, Contractors have a duty to make sure that the client knows what they're talking about. The client needs to know their duties and the regulations and that contractors have a duty to make sure that they do. Every contractor on site has a duty for them, the work that they carry out and any workers under their control, be them sole traders, freelancers, whatever, they make sure that the work is planned, managed and monitors where all of the health and safety risks as far as reasonable and practicable are managed. So safety is not done by somebody else. If you're a contractor, you have a duty to make sure that those risks are managed. And this is a real difficult area within construction because it's built up of millions of little companies and sole traders, and it makes it really complex. And there is a real misconception that we're just passing responsibility onto the next person. Like, people who write this legislation are not that fucking stupid people, right? You all have that duty. You all have the duty to make sure that the work is carrying on without risk to health and safety so far as reasonably practicable. So, I'm sorry, but whether you're a sole trader or you're a massive house builder or a huge corporate construction company or whatever, You've all got those duties. It's not passing it down. You've got to manage it. So if you're the big body in this process, I'm sorry, suck it up. You should be managing this. But if you're also the sole trader in this, I'm sorry, suck it up. You should be managing this. It's fucking complex as shit, but anyway. Moving on, if it's only one contractor in a project, they have a duty to take into account the principles of prevention. This is regarding the work, when they're planning the work and the estimated timelines of the project, various phases of the project and so on. You have to take into account the principles of prevention. So trying to eliminate and substitute and control and then putting admin and so on. You need to take them into account, particularly if you're the only contractor on site. If it's only one contractor, then that contractor will need to prepare the construction phase plan. You need to make sure if you're a contractor, anyone that you employ is competent, they've got the relevant skills, knowledge, experience, training, etc. 
that is much more than actually just getting a freaking ticket and the CSCS card it means actual competent people that know what they're doing. And when I say know what they're doing, that means not just how to put a brick here and a brick there or whatever, that's a skill in its own right, 100%. However, they must also be aware of how to manage the risks of the work that they're doing. The contractor shouldn't start work unless reasonable steps have been taken to prevent unauthorized access. Construction sites are nefarious, dangerous places. We don't want kids running around in there. We don't want anyone who on that side that shouldn't be on there. So reasonable steps should be taken for you to stop unauthorized access on site. You need to make sure that you're providing adequate welfare facilities and that can be proportionate to the project so you know, CDM applies for everything and people struggle to get their heads around this so CDM applies to Bob just building a brick wall at the front of my house for example or coming in to repoint my garden wall or something like that all the way up to a massive site rebuilding a whole city CDM applies to all of those projects and everything in between and there is a need for a welfare facility, but that welfare facility should be proportionate to the complexity, length and risk of the project. So for example, it could just be an email to the client just saying, is it right for my team? Use your toilet throughout the duration of the job. It could be getting a portal on site. It could be a huge welfare facility, proportionate to the time that you're on that site doing that project and so on. Contractors have a duty to comply with the construction phase plan and the relevant processes put in place by the principal designer and the principal contractor. And ultimately you have a duty to report any dangerous shit going on, whether you see something that's dangerous, whether there's a dangerous occurrence, an incident, um, or anything like that. You have a duty to report that and you have a duty to comply and cooperate with everyone else on site. Contractors finally also have a legal duty to comply with part four of the regulations. And part four is for those more higher risk, specific risk work, such as using explosives, uh, demolition, things like that, um, dams and excavations, underground services, and so on. So there are specific requirements within there. Um, we'll do a little video on that as well. But you have, if you're a contractor, you have a specific duty to comply with part four of the regulations as well. Okay then, so principal contractors that are in addition to contractors have some additional duties. So the principal contractor is normally the, the company that's at the top. They might then employ what's called a subby normally on site, which is a contractor for a brickie, for example, and they'll have loads of gangs of brickie underneath them. Then they might might have like a sparky subby who then has a load of gangs of sparkies underneath them and so on and so on and so on right and then typically underneath that you've just got shit loads of sole traders it's complex as shit and i don't think it's a good idea but moving swiftly on principal contractors like everyone have a duty to not accept the job unless they are competent and have the capacity to do it they have a duty to make sure that the client knows what they're talking about make sure that the client knows their duties under the regulations every single person in this project has a duty to make sure that the client is aware of the regulations so if somebody's not doing it you're all fucking up the principal contractor will carry out and prepare the construction phase plan so all the other contractors on site won't if one of the contractors is defined Defined as a principal contractor. So if you have loads of contractors on site, one of them must be defined as a principal contractor. If there's one contractor on site, then you are the principal contractor. As a principal contractor, you have a duty to ensure the cooperation between all of the contractors on site. You have to make sure that all the contractors on site are complying with the health and safety legal requirements. They're aware of it, they're doing it. They're cooperating with everybody in order to do that. You have a duty to make sure that everything on site is planned, managed and monitored in the in the name of health and safety to make sure that you are managing those risks as far as reasonably practicable you have to make sure that everyone's operating within part four of the regulations and within the construction phase plan as well you have to make sure that suitable site inductions take place so people that are coming onto a site they go through a suitable site induction note the word suitable please so if it's a big messy complex site it should be a good induction and if it's a little site then it shouldn't be freaking three hours of a presentation or whatever try and make it effective people the amount of inductions i go into that i'm just like mother this is just a waste of everybody's time tick 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 tick
it done thanks by make it suitable make it sufficient make it relevant principal contractors have to make sure that there's suitable welfare facilities on site as well they also have to make sure that they're liaising with the principal designer with regard to construction phase plan with regard to pre-construction information with regard to how health and safety is being managed through project where the principal designer's role does conclude before the end of the project they normally sit there behind the scenes and sometimes they're the same company but sometimes it does happen that their job is finished and they bugger off in that case the health and safety file um, it still needs to be handed over to the client and they can pass that duty over to the principal contractor and where that is the case, they have to make sure that the health and safety file goes not only to the client, but anyone that has a kind of stake in the client's interest, uh, maybe like a tenant or something like that, but ultimately making sure that that file is passed on to the right people. Okay, peeps, that's a brief summary of the duties of what, what contractors are and what their duties are. Hopefully that's helpful. If you do need some help with this stuff, then go to riskfluentlimited.com. We'd love to help you out. We're working on a few construction projects at the moment, which has uh, sparked this little video series. Uh, but otherwise, I'll catch you next week. Safe.